Well, be careful. It's all right. Just one little kiss. George is driving. Okay. Here's one for you. And here's one for winning the game tomorrow night. Huh. That'll be a cinch. Now, with George and me in there tossing baskets, the city college won't have a chance. You boys are wonderful. Well, we got a team. Haven't lost a basketball game this season. Here's a kiss of the team. If you guys are through pitching Lou, don't you think we better be going back? The game's tomorrow night, you know, and the boys will need some rest. Oh, just a little farther. Kiss me, Phil. Wow. Are you atomic? Hey, hold on. I'm going to turn to the next corner. George, isn't that a car pulled across the road up there? Yeah, that's gone. Lou, what does he think he's doing? <laughs> hey, what's the matter with you, fella? You want to get hit or something? <laughs> All right, you guys. Get out. Hey, what's the idea? Get out. This ain't a yo-yo I got in my hands. Yes, we'd better acquiesce. Not you, Dane. Just the guy. Just what is this? This sister is a snack. And if either one of you squeaks one word about this, these guys' lives won't be worth a plug Chinese buck. <laughs> Dr. Banfield, student of crime psychology, has many times provided the police with a solution to a baffling crime. There's an interesting case ahead for the doctor today. We'll call it Money in a Basket. You know, Dan, I wish I'd studied psychology when I was in school. Well, <laughs> it isn't too late, Lexi, you know. I'm giving lectures over at Norton College every Thursday afternoon. Oh. I don't want to go on Thursdays. That's my day off. Well, why a sudden interest? Oh, I'd, uh, I'd just like to know what you're thinking when you sit there looking at me and drum on your desk with your pencil. It's uh, probably just as well that you didn't study psychology. <laughs> uh, want a few letters, Rustin? Okay. What do you want? I want to see Dr. Dan here. Oh, well... You've seen him. Goodbye. Oh, uh, let's see, let's see. So, young lady, yeah. Okay, the boss said so you can come in. Thanks. Yeah, I want you have this chair. Thanks. My name is June Webster. Yes, yes, I recognize you. You're one of the young ladies in my Thursday courses. That's about right. Oh, there's something in my last lecture that you didn't understand? No. I want to see you about something entirely different. Oh, well, that's the right Oh, uh, there's your... Secretary, have to be here. You just bet your life I do. Rusty. Well, I'm not going out of here and leave you alone with, with her. I won't eat him. I say. Ah, oh, you see how things are, Miss Rusty? She say. Well, I guess it wasn't. Oh, now, tell me, uh, what is it you want? My boyfriend has been kidnapped. Kidnapped? Yes. Last evening we were out driving. So crazy, that's my boyfriend. And Jimmy Norman was kidnapped. Oh. Some thugs stick out of her. Crazy numb. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, you say this happened last evening? Yeah. Why, why did you go to the first time? I said, you were just a little bit. I was like, I said, 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 Neither one of us had any. I live in a small little house over in Brooklyn, and so she has a room over the campus with George Merriman. Well, what's money got to do with the boys not being kidnapped? Well, don't you see? The poor still has the money bet on tonight's game. Well, all season long, Norton has been the favorite. We never have gone into a game where the odds have been less than five to two in our favor. Oh. Well, this morning, I dropped a four to one that Norton would lose. I see, and uh, you think that your boyfriend had himself kidnapped along with George Merriman so they wouldn't be able to play in the game? That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah. Yeah, it's going out there are two stars. Norton is bound to lose. If that guy's done that, our marriage is off. I'll never speak to him again as long as I live. Well, I, I wouldn't be too hasty to kill him. It uh, might be entirely on the low. What's the name of my sister? Phil told me just yesterday. He's going to get a lot of money a very few days. He wants to get married right away. Uh, I see. Well, uh, what, what do you want me to do? I'm the boy. You will expose him or 
Oh, we have very much, much time, then. I think in Madison Square, where it's at 10 o'clock tonight. In a moment, we will return to my Michael Hammond's second act of danger, Dr. Danfield, but first... I'm Michael Dunn for the second conduct of The Danger, Dr. Danville. What do you want to look at Phil's and George's scene for, Dean? Well, when you're investigating a disappearance, I see it's a, it's a pretty good start to see where the parts is live. Now, I see. Now, this is the room right here. Well, aren't you going to knock? I can't see how that would be necessary. We know the big guy's on home. We'll uh, walk right in. Come on, come on. Oh, Dad, we're not alone. Baby, what is the idea of walking in without out knocking? Oh, is this your room? No, it ain't. What you guys doing in here? Well, I might ask you the same question. And, and uh, don't say you're one of the college boys. My guy, ain't you? You still haven't told me what you're doing in here. <laughs> For George and Phil, I'm none of their very good friends. Hmm. Brought up on the same block, I saw. Sure, I've ignored them all the right. Now, I'm sure that the acquaintanceship is to be mutually beneficial. Hmm? Uh, never mind. Never mind. You wouldn't know anyway. How did I tell you what I was just doing? You know, how about you in the same position? Well, you see, what's up to the here? You have to look at the up to the What's that? Anything in your vernacular, it would probably be a pair of brass knuckles and a black hat. Hey, <laughs> our damn George wouldn't still really aren't there, please. What's wrong with trophies? What did she say? Trophies, trophies. Those things up on the mantel over there. Those, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. Have it your way, pal. Yeah, they warned them playing football. All right, Mr. Whatever your name is. What, what, what'd you do with the boys? I don't know what you're talking about. You, you, you do? What did you think that? Because Phil and George never played a game of football in their lives. And if you were their friend, you'd know it. Now tell me what you did for them. I didn't want it to get rough, but, but you can do it. You can put away that, that gun. It doesn't scare me a bit. I told him them names not the same as them. They're going to make it to pop on the boys. They should have killed them. They, they should have. Oh, so you're the one who did that them. That's a naughty word, Bob. You know, and if I want to see him, I'll take it to him. All right, better. Do you and your room ain't going to be able to talk to him. Because why? Because why? Because dead people don't talk. <laughs> Oh, that's a perfect bull eye. I hope I didn't dent it. Phil Craig won that up at a dog show. Yeah, now, grab a pillowcase, Rusty. Let's just truck up this hunk of beef. Pillowcase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tuck up a Christmas tree. Oh, sure. Uh, uh, hurry, Rusty. Our friend's coming through. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's out of you. Yeah, you try it. Let's see how I get it. Hey, hey, hey. Swanky joint. Sally must have me. Dina. One, 
two, three. <laughs> you want to see me, Oh, yes. yes. Oh, well, how are you, Miss Grayson? Well, come in, come in. This is a surprise. Class, Dan, collect. Hey, oh. you uh, see you have company. Yes, but I thought them bother you. You know, you're doing Webster, of course. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Uh, you were uh, dressing again in June? I thought you were in a little house in Brooklyn. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm just standing here with Sally until the people came in. Sure. Uh, you know, my, my secretary, Dr. Fairfax, Mrs. Grayson? Yeah, no, I don't believe so. Glad I know you're rusty. Hi. And this is Fifi LeMain. Fifi sings the blue pop. The, the blue pop? Yes, it's a nightclub, Rusty. Hmm. You sure get it around. <laughs> Miss LeMain, I'll have to dance you. Miss Fairfax. Hmm. You must come up to see me in time. Mm-hmm. I'd uh, rather like to. Mm-hmm. Who she is. Susie was just reminding me of a party we had at the Blue Pop, Dr. Danfield. I, I don't even remember being there. I guess it was the time when I was imbibing. Why, I miss the Nice little toys, girls. You didn't drink. <laughs> nice ones don't. Have you found out anything about Finn and George? And uh, no, no, not yet. Oh, no. Miss Sally. Did you know Dr. Danfield was about last night? So that's the reason he's here? Yeah, I did. So, so, so. Gotta be some mom before that game tonight. Now, who had that drug check? Did you leave the word about this to a soul like Joy? I know, but I, I thought. You thought. Oh, you silly little squirt. Anything to do with those kids with the little old thing in your throat? You just about to say you killed him yourself. I only wanted to. You give me your clothes and get out of here. I was a lady. Did I understand you to say that soul craze is in danger? What do you know about soul craze? Why? Well, Phil and I are just, just like that. I don't believe you. Oh, is that that's so? All I'll have you know that Phil craze comes to me see me play for time. He takes me home after the show and I let him to kiss me. Because I like it. <laughs> you know what I do. Okay, I don't like it too much anyway. I can see you something in the middle. Dr. Dan. Mm, you will. Maybe tonight. Then. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I'd be glad to take you, Dr. Dan, too. I have a brand new Cadillac parked just outside. Then, if you if you do, I'll never speak to you again. Why, right, Rusty, don't you get the pitch? Why, well, it all ties in like the laces on a third baseman's glove. Hmm. <laughs> Turn for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first. <laughs> now we return you to Michael Dunn for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. <laughs> This is the blue pop. Hmm? Really, Dan, I love to go slumming. <laughs> I'll make up for it, honey. Tomorrow night, I'll take you to the short club with all the friends. Ah. That is, if uh, Norton wins tonight, and I win my best. Well, then we won't go to the short club. You realize it's just three hours until game time? We haven't even got an idea where the boys are sitting now. Well, what do you think I brought you here for? Oh, now, don't tell me you think that George and Phil are here, not a big job. What gave you that idea? Mm, a little trail is winding into the land of my dreams. It is no time to start getting poetical. Right, George, I'm right. Huh? What's the matter? Take a look over there by the door. By the... Again, it's... it's... Yes, Rusty, it's our beefy friend. Yes. The one we look all tied up nice and pretty at George and Phil's room. But, but how did you... Get loose? Well, my guess is that somebody set him loose. Never could have wriggled out of those knots that I tied him with. I was a boy scout once. Who could have done that? I don't know, but I've got a mighty good idea. Danny's looking right at us. Yes. Look at the grin. Just daring us to try and get out of that door. Oh, hi, your friend. Hi, yes, doctor. I dare say, my dear Rusty, that we've walked right into a trap. I don't remember one point. I could throw a sugar bowl or something. No, I'm afraid it wouldn't do much good, Rusty. If you'll notice, there are about three other tough-looking mugs hanging around that door. They aren't taking any chances. Well, couldn't you get to the phone and call the cops? Probably. I doubt if we would still be here when the cops arrive. 
I think they're just aching for us to make a move. Our boyfriend must think he's pretty smart. Oh, he's just a stooge. The main guy in this record is probably the owner of the place. Well, why don't we call on him in his office? And I doubt if old funny face over there will let us. I've got an idea. Hmm, that's more than I have. Look, why don't I make like I'm going to the powder room? Maybe get confused and open a few long doors. Hey. It probably won't get suspicious as long as you're here at the table. Hey, good girl, Rusty. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Not bad. If I find anything, I'll let out a yelp and you come running. Yeah, uh, all right, but uh, be mighty careful, huh? Did you bring a gun? No, but uh, I still have a pretty good look. Okay. Hold your breath. There I go. Good one. Mm -hmm. Hey, you. Huh? Where's your girlfriend going? <laughs> Now, I know you never went to college, or you wouldn't ask questions like that. Well, you'd better not be trying anything fun. Oh, go back to your little old door and sit down. Go on, Spike. I want to talk to the guy. Well, okay. Fifi, fancy meeting you here. Hi, a tall, dark, and Gregory Peck looking. Just fine, just fine. I, I, I thought I'd take you up on your little invitation. Me, too. I knew I could get you here. There ain't any psychology that works better than a pretty leg and a... Come on, glint me eye. <laughs> You'll have to come down and give a lecture to my class sometime. Oh, brother. I could teach them guys something. Have a drink? Uh, no, 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 thanks. I don't think I'd care for your brand of knockout rock. Oh, come on. You ain't going anywhere. Yes, I'm beginning to get the idea that I'm not. Tell me, um, how long do you intend keeping us here? Only until after the game. Then you can go just as free as you came in. You can even take me home, handsome. To get rid of that girlfriend of yours. Uh, thanks, but uh, I always leave with a gal what drunk me. <laughs> you, uh, you know something, Fifi? Tomorrow I'm going to swear out a warrant for your arrest. For what? Kidnapping. Kidnapping who? Me and Rusty. Oh, don't make me giggle. You came here of your own free will, didn't you? Yeah. And if you don't cause any trouble, you can leave the same way. And uh, if I do cause any trouble? Oh, one of the boys will put you to sleep. And there'll be ten witnesses in the morning who'll swear that you and your girlfriend were drunk and disorderly. <laughs> You've uh, got it all figured out, haven't you? Yeah. we got it all figured out. <coughs> hey! Hey, that was what? <coughs> You think you're going? Oh, never know. <laughs> hey, stop your supper, shoot! You're too late, my friend. Look. Oh. Hey, 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 I told you not to get funny. Oh, right, now, right. Right. Where are you going? Oh, there, now, the coast is clear. Rusty! Rusty, where are you? Oh, Daddy! Oh, in there, huh? You right with you. Oh, Daddy, look! You're so dead! That's going to do if we're locked in here tighter than a drum. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah. There. Now you freeze the bird. Now I'll just turn on the light. Oh, do you see them? Under the door, the crack. I'll have to take a chance for a minute. Well, couldn't you yell out the window? Uh, there isn't any window, Rusty. Anyway, they just bring them a running. Ah. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Now I'll turn on the light. What are you looking for? Telephone, telephone. Uh, thank heaven for Donna, me. <laughs> yes. Now, if nobody comes in from it. Oh. I, 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 I have that. Uh, hello, operator. Give me the fire department. Yes, yes, that's right. 
Hey, hello. This is uh, Dr. Daniel Danfield. I want to report a fire at the Blue Pup Nightclub. The Blue Pup Nightclub? Yes, yes, that's right. And hurry, will you? My secretary and I are locked up in the manager's office. Hey, yes, yes, yes. I know it sounds crazy, but it's a fact. And, and Chief, Chief, uh, will you do me a favor? Look up an address for me, will you? Listen, Chief, it's a matter of life and death. Yeah, that's right. It's a little house in Brooklyn. The name is Miss June Webster. Well, here they come, Rusty. Here they come. Oh, thank heaven. Oh, now, Spike will only let them in. Huh? You don't know the New York Fire Department. They'll probably have a dozen of New York's finest with them. Hey, you get what I mean? What did I tell you? I am sure am, Chief. Get you out the front of the door now. That'll be a thing. Come on, fellas. What for? Hey, now then. Where's the fire? In my head, Chief. You see the lump? Hey, what is this? A false alarm? No, not at all, Chief. You're here just in time to save the honor of good old Norton College. Norton? Hey, my boy was there. Oh, and that reminds me. Let's get back to the firehouse. I want to listen to that game tonight on my radio. Oh, I'm ten bucks on the game. Yeah? Who are you betting on? Why, Norton, of course. Who else? Well, then, if you want to save your money, you better take us to that little house in Brooklyn that I spoke to you about. Yeah, why? Because unless I'm very badly mistaken, Chief, Norton's two best players, Phil Craig and George Merriman, are being held prisoners there. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, let's go! Uh... I never thought I'd get a chance to find the fire. Oh, boy, me and the little flower. <laughs> Come on, boys, into the place. Uh, don't bother the nuts. Uh, uh, I won't. Hey, what is this? Hell, oh, bright eyes, you move around fast, don't you? Hey, hey, it's Stanfield. Get him, boy. Oh, we give up, we give up. We can't fight the whole police force. And uh, don't forget the fire department. And the fire department. All right, Spike, where are they? In the back room. And uh, where is Miss June? Out in the kitchen. She got scared and was going to sweep. I had to smack her down. Uh -huh. Come on, fellas. The coast is clear. Thank heaven you guys got here. We're just about giving up. Well, yeah, it's never too late, Phil. Hey, what time is it? You've got just an hour. Well, come on, Phil. We can just make it. We simply got it for good old Norton. <laughs> Turn for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first. Now back to Michael Gunn for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. suspected either one of them for a moment. If George or Phil ever needed money that badly, all they'd have to do would be to turn professional. Besides, Rusty, good, clean athletes like those kids just don't go bad. It's hardly possible psychologically. Hey, what made you want to turn to you and tell you she thought the whole thing was a frame-up? I can't hear you. What are you saying? I said, what made you to come to you and tell you she thought the whole thing was a frame-up? Because she wanted to throw suspicion on Phil Craig. She knew there'd be a stink after the whole thing was over. She was just trying to get out from under. And she was in on the deal all the time. Why, sure. She's the one who untied our boyfriend for us. Say, what made you so sure it wasn't the frame up there? Well, for one thing, Spike being planted in the boys' room. He was uh, he was there to notify the gang if we discovered it was a real kidnapping. Our uh, tying them up forced their hand. That's why June brought Fifi over to Sally's room as a, as a decoy to get us out to the nightclub. Come on, did you fall for that? I'll say I did for a while. I, uh, I thought the boys might be out there. What they really wanted was to get us out there and hold us until after the game. Hey, hey. I, still don't, I 
still don't see how you connected June up with the case. Or how you figured that the boys were being held at her house in Brooklyn. Oh, I figured that the boys were being held in her... Oh, I knew she was there from the first. Why? Well, because of her knowledge of the odds on the game. The odds she quoted at 4-1 to one against Norton were only changed that morning. Oh. She hadn't had time to be in the papers yet. Therefore, only somebody connected with gambling would know about it. How about her house? Huh? How about her house? Oh, that was a bit of luck. Plus the fact that it was the most logical place for him to be. Hey, what a game, huh? <laughs> oh, boy. You know, Rusty... Come to think of it, that Sally Grayson has an awfully nice new Cadillac. Don't you ever let me catch you riding in it. <laughs> I won't. I could have a lot more fun in uh, your four. You can't. 